Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over the radar for the Vigan. One thing to note before I start the video, the radar is connected to the navigation system and there are some navigation functions for the radar that I won't be going over in this video because I'm going to go over them in the navigation video. So if you're watching this video to see how to do radar navigation fixes, that will be in the navigation video. All right, let's get started. You turn the radar on with this switch right here. A0 is off and A1 and A2 are different modes. This is A1 and this is A2. I'll just be in A1 for now. Here's the radar display. This beam sleeping back and forth is the radar antenna. The radar displays the terrain in front of you. If it is black, that means it is land or some kind of terrain. And if you see sections that are just clear, that means it is probably a river or a lake. You can see there's this clear line going through, and if I look at the map, that is actually this river here. Also, some areas of the display are darker than others. You can see out here it's pretty gray, but there's this dark spot. That means there are more radar returns coming back. If you look at the map, you can see that dark spot on the radar is actually this city right here. Also, the closer to you, the more detailed it is, the farther out it doesn't look as good. If I zoom in the radar really close to me, you can see it's all pretty detailed right here. But if I go out really far, you can see it's kind of hard to tell what exactly this is out here. The radar has this line going down the middle. That is an artificial horizon. If I roll the plane, you can see that line will roll. The radar can also be used to look for ships. If you're out in the water, ships will come up as a little blip. You also might see a circle on the radar, like right here. That is a waypoint. You can set the brightness of the radar with this switch right here. You can use these switches here to adjust the range of the radar display. I'd recommend binding them to your keyboard or your stick. It's radar range decrease and increase. The range will show up here as this number. You can see right now it's 60 kilometers. You can go all the way into 15 kilometers or all the way out to 120 kilometers. You can use this wheel right here to adjust the elevation of the radar. You can point it up and down. If I point the radar all the way up, you can see nothing is displayed. I'd recommend binding this button to your stick, Radar Elevation Center. If you click that button, the wheel will snap back to the center. And now my radar is normal again. You also might want to bind these switches here, Radar Marker Gain Decrease and Increase. The gain will change how dark the radar returns are. If I increase the gain all the way, you can see the returns are a lot darker now. That was the basic display of the radar. Let's go over A0, A1, and A2 again. Like I mentioned before, if you switch this to A0, that just turns the radar off. A1 was the mode that we were just in. Now let's go over A2 mode. If you put it to A2 mode, then it comes up with this square display. This is also called a B-scope. In A2 mode, it doesn't scan as wide, but it updates faster. You can also see that in A2 mode, it kind of forces it into a different shape. In A1 mode, we get these empty spots right here, and you can see they're kind of diagonal. And that sa those same empty spots also show up in A2, but they're just kind of different. Let's go over some other radar controls. First is the LIN log control right here. By default, it is in log mode. In log mode, you can see there's different shades of darkness depending on the returns. If you switch it to lin mode, in lin mode, the contrast is more obvious. So if you want to have more contrast, then you can use lin mode. But if you want to have more detail about the different types of terrain, then you can switch it to log mode. Like I mentioned before, you can adjust the brightness with this switch here of the radar, but there's also a night filter you can turn on if you want. You have to bind the controls to your stick it's these controls here, radar, CI, filter, anti-clockwise, and clockwise. If you hold the anti-clockwise button, the filter will come on, and you can see it turns the radar red. There's also this switch here. This switch says anti-jamming mode. In the manual, it says if your radar is being jammed, you can select one of these different filters and try to find the range of what's jamming you. There's this switch here that says land and SJO. If you're flying over land, you set it to land. If you're flying over the sea, you set it to SJO. There's also this switch here that says pulse normal and court. The manual doesn't really explain it and I'm not sure what it does, so I would just leave it at default. Now I'll go over the passive radar mode. If you turn the radar off by setting this switch to A0, 
you can actually turn this switch here on that says passive and it will turn your radar display on it just won't emit anything this is useful because if there is somebody that is jamming with a radar you will be able to see the jamming signals but you're not emitting anything so nobody will be able to see your radar signals now i'll go over terrain avoidance mode you can turn on terrain avoidance mode by clicking this switch on the stick right here when I turn it on, you can see the radar changes. Terrain avoidance mode only will show returns that are at the same altitude as you. In order for this to work properly, you have to make sure your elevation is centered. That's why I would recommend binding this switch radar elevation center. When you have terrain avoidance mode on, if you see a radar return, that means there's something in front of you. So you need to make sure you don't go that way because you'll get hit or you need to increase your altitude. For example, right now you can see I have no returns for a pretty long distance, but when I get all the way out here, now I have some returns. That's because I'm at a pretty high altitude and there's not really anything that's the same elevation as me, except for that mountain range out there. So if it were, there were bad weather outside and I couldn't see anything, I would look at my radar and I would say, okay, I'm good for now, but once I get close to this mountain range, I need to go around it or I need to increase my altitude or I'm going to hit these contacts here. So terrain avoidance mode is really useful. If you want to turn it off, you just click the button again and it will go back to normal radar mode. Now I'll go over memory mode. If you click this button on your stick, it turns on memory mode. It will freeze the current radar picture and it will stop emitting. This can be useful if you want to stop emitting because you don't want anyone to see your radar waves, but you don't want to turn the radar off. You still want to see what the picture was showing. The picture will stay on your radar for about 30 seconds. If you want to get out of memory mode, you just click the button again and it will start emitting again. Last, I'll go over air to air mode. If you want to use the air to air mode with the radar, you need to have an air-to-air -air weapon equipped and you need to select that weapon. Right now I have IR missiles equipped, so I'm going to go to the weapon selector and select the IR missiles. In air-to-air -air mode, the radar will be pointing 1.5 degrees up by default and this bar will show your elevation. If I decrease the elevation, the bar will go left and if I increase it, the bar will go right. Keep in mind, you can't lock targets in air-to-air -air mode. All it's for is searching for airplanes and seeing how far away they are. Also, in air-to-air -air mode, I would recommend having your targets above you. If you are above your target, then your radar is going to be looking down, and you're going to be getting returns from the target and from the ground, so it might be hard to find the target. But if you are below the target, then the only returns you're going to be getting is just the target, so it'll be a lot easier to see it. That was the radar for the Vigan. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.